Hello everyone, my name is Ewan Smith and today I'm going to show you how to create a GPU using C++ and an FPGA. So this GPU is going to create a VGA signal. So I'll quickly go over how that works. Uh, think back to the old cathode ray TVs that had a physical electron gun at the back that would fire an electron beam. This beam scans from left to right across the display and while it's doing that, it reads in analog data from the red, green, and blue pins on the VGA port. Um, once it reaches the end of the line, uh, the horizontal sink, which is at high voltage, drops to zero and then toggles back to high voltage to indicate that the beam should move back to the start and move down one row. This repeats until we get to the end of the display, at which point the vertical sink toggles from high to low back again to indicate that we're going back to the start of the display. To create this GPU, I'm going to use the RTA7 FPGA development board, and I'm going to plug that into a VGA adapter. The VGA adapter contains three digital to analog converters, which take four binary inputs and use a resistor ladder to convert that into an analog signal. So an incredibly simple device, the VGA adapter. Um, and here is the C++ that then creates the first VGA signal. This C++ is going to be uh, run through Xilinx's high-level synthesis tool, which is essentially going to convert every expression and every line and every function into a digital uh, circuit. So at the top, this function has five outputs, the horizontal sync, vertical sync, and red, green, and blue. HLS does an, uses LLVM and runs a pass to see if the values are being right, written to or read from, so it can deduce if they're inputs or outputs. I then say that we don't want to do any kind of fancy interface stuff with these variables. So we can essentially look at them as analogous to bit banging GPIOs in a microcontroller. We then have a big while loop that just keeps looping forever. We then have a for loop that iterates over every row, a for loop that iterates over every column, and then this pragma that tells us we want to pipeline the innermost loop. Um, and this pipelining then allows us to start a new iteration of this inner for loop on every clock cycle. Up next, we have this XY enable, which is true if we are inside the draw area. Um, and then we can write some values to these outputs up here. Because FPGAs are implicitly parallel, all of these writes will happen simultaneously and on the same clock cycle. If we then set the clock frequency to the VGA frequency, we're actually like writing on every clock cycle and we then produce this VGA signal. So we have these kind of Boolean or binary expressions, or these logical expressions to set the horizontal sync and vertical sync to the correct on or off values. And then for the red, green, and blue, if we are inside the display area, we can set the red, green, and blue to some mathematical equation based on the x and y coordinates. Otherwise, if we're outside the display area, we'll set it to zero. So we can then import this HLS, import this code after it's been run through HLS and converted to Verilog into Xilinx's uh, Vivado package which allows us to hook up the clock, set it to the right frequency, and then point it to the right outputs. And if we do this, we see this uh, very psychedelic looking pattern on our monitor. But let's uh, move on and draw a texture. I can define a struct color with red, green, and blue components. I can then create a function, get sky pixel, which will return a color with specified coordinates. And all this does is looks up the corresponding pixel in these massive arrays of RGB data. So we can go back to our initial code, add a line to get the pixel color, or set the pixel color to the corresponding coordinates on the display. And instead of outputting some equations, we can output the corresponding colors. Run this through the tool, and then we have this uh, sort of repeating tiled sky texture. But let's take this further again and draw a triangle. We can define a point as um, an x and y coordinate in a struct, and we can then define a triangle as three points. Then we just need to steal some code from Stack Overflow that uses barycentric coordinates to determine if a given point is inside a given triangle. And we can then make some more changes to our main loop. So we define a triangle with these three coordinates. And then to get the, to get the pixel color, we first ask, is the point inside this triangle um, where we get the X and Y from the initial for loop? If it is inside the triangle, we set this point to red. If it's outside, we set it to the sky pixel. And if we run this through the tools, we then have this nice red triangle on this sky background. So there we have it. In 100 lines of code, we've created a red triangle, a texture, and the hardware to produce the VGA signal.
Great. Thank you.